Okay, I'm going to preface this video by saying I just recently watched Dune. Um, not the Timothy Macrame one, I'm talking about the David Lynch KFC Emperor Secret Blend of Spice Melanges and Herbs version of Dune. You know that one. If you know, you know. So I might be Kwisatz Kit Kat Cadillacing all over this sketchbook as I try to bridge the gap between space and time. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm the least on mac and cheese or whatever, I'm just saying sketchbooks are weird like that. There's like some time distortion involved. The first drawings I'm going to show are around like 30 years old I think, so bear that in mind. Oh wow, this is going to be a lot harder than I thought. Okay, we're starting off pretty strong today guys. So, so this first drawing appears to be a sci-fi super soldier of some kind, because I was all about originality back then obviously. And as you can see, I seem to have mastered anatomy early on. I pretty much nailed the way this longest oblique is here connects to the Tricera Tripas over there. And the shading is, it's okay, but I feel like I didn't put enough unnecessary detail into this drawing. I feel like that could have helped with the readability a little bit, you know? This is also totally not a ripoff of the ghost from the original StarCraft manual at all, ever. Oh, what the holy jeebus did I do to Venom here? So this is probably one of the funkiest looking Venom drawings you'll ever see. The shading on the upper lip must have taken at least a few hours though. I'm not sure why I didn't draw his neck and those teeth are unacceptably out of control, even for Venom standards. I must have had a fun time drawing this though, that's for sure. Oh uh, yeah, I, I remember drawing this dragon. I remember, I, I used to have this uh, shirt that had a dragon wrapped around a skull when I was a kid. And you have to bear in mind, back then I was still saying things like, that, that's radical, dude. And I think I was just trying to be with it, you know? And geez, look at how wonky those wings look. Like, what's going on there? I, I still hate drawing wings like to this day, but yeah, it's just a chore. I can also tell I was too lazy to draw the appropriate size scales here, so I just made them really big to save like time and effort probably. But this is easily one of my favorites in this book for just, just for the nostalgia alone. So I must have gone through a phase where I was trying to tap into the power of the occult to summon demons from the nine realms of hell or something like that and I'm pretty sure all artists go through that. Like there's several phases in their sketchbooks. You know, for me, this was right before my cringy anime phase and my edgy graffiti phase. Or maybe, you know, it was probably just me trying to do something Diablo inspired and failing at it. But I feel like the symmetry isn't that bad here. I feel like I must have discovered the power of rulers at this point. Okay, I can explain this drawing. So I grew up on a ranch, right? And there were a lot of horses there, mostly Arabians, but my godfather had a Palomino named Comet. And I remember he asked me to draw him a picture of this horse, right? But I ended up drawing a picture of this duck horse hybrid instead. So I never actually gave him a drawing because I... <laughs> Look at his face! <laughs> Look at this! This is just derpiness exponential multiplied by the power of Y, so... Here it's gonna remain trapped and unable to terrorize the children of my village. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> oh my God! <clears throat> okay, let me compose myself here. Okay, this next drawing is part of a true story. I'm not, I'm not religious or anything, but I made this drawing of the Lady of Guadalupe. I, I mean, I, it's pronounced Guadalupe, but I like to say Guadalupe. Anyway, my first time visiting my family in Mexico. I got really sick because I made the mistake of eating food and water while I was there. So something I ingested messed me up pretty bad and left me bedridden. And while I was dying there in my grandma's house, she told me to draw this picture, right? And so I tried to do a really good job on it so I wouldn't die. And I ended up not dying, obviously. But this drawing kind of makes me wonder about stuff, you know? Life do be trippy like that sometimes. And no, I do, I do. You know, I think about stuff a little bit longer than usual. So there was this neighbor kid back in the day who was obsessed with the real OG Star Wars films. And so he would watch like Empire Strikes Back at least 10 times a year, maybe even more than that. And he would invite me over because I was like the only other kid on the ranch he could hang out with, I guess. And so we became friends. And one day I drew this Tauntaun in this book. And I didn't know it at the time, but this was the exact moment that I had forfeited any potential to acquire maidens in my own future. 
I don't know how much more of this I can take, guys. <laughs> this, this incoherent little bastard was one of my first attempts to create a bit of backstory to my characters. I called it a Kronkole. Uh Yeah, because I was obviously the best at naming things back then. Um, and this picture, he seems to be like harvesting these things called chronic worms. And I guess they grow in some type of mana swamp. And uh, I don't even know what the chronic worms are used for, but I'm guessing it's something that will get me demonetized. So let's just move on to the next drawing. I'm pretty sure this thing is supposed to be a leopard, but I ended up drawing it twice because I wasn't happy with the way it came out the first time. Uh, the other one I drew, I gifted it to a girl I liked at the time, and I think she was nice about it and she kept it because many years later I, I ran into her dad who remembered me and told me that she still had the picture of the elephant I drew her which was his way of saying your leopard drawing sucks, but she liked you enough not to throw it away, so get out of my face. Just kidding, he didn't say face, he said get out of my house. So I never saw them again after that. One day I came to my senses, right, and I realized I actually needed to learn anatomy, and my brother saw that I was struggling to draw the human figure, so he got me a book for Christmas called Anatomy for Artists, and I just started drawing random things from there. At first I just copied stuff without like internalizing any of it and it was like it's like sort of like when you read a page from a book you know but you don't actually take in any of the information so you have to go back and read it all over again and later on I actually started to internalize anatomy better but in the beginning I actually thought all you had to do was draw something once and it's like it would stay forever ingrained in your head and I was like dang that's not really how it works dude Okay, this is kind of cool. Check this out. I would do stuff like this during class. I would draw one thing and then let it grow out organically into a huge mass of jumbled images that kind of looks cool like all together, but when you separate all the drawings individually, they all look kind of amateurish. So this was also during my wannabe tattoo artist phase because I would go to these uh, Mexican bread stores where they sell pan and they had these cholo stickers and tiny little homie plastic collectible figures that you could get from 25 cent vending machines uh so i would buy the stickers and the little homie every time i went and then i would go home and draw some of the art that was on the stickers it was like old school airbrush type stuff but that was what made me love shading and rendering in the early days it was weird because i wasn't a cholo kid myself it's just i just thought the art was really cool so after my tattoo phase, that led to my graffiti phase. Since I grew up on a ranch, the ghetto culture was so fascinating to me that I would see trains and bridge overpasses that had this like really cool lettering. And I wanted to do the same thing, but my handwriting suggests that I wasn't chill enough to write properly. So I kept the black book where I practiced doing my own graffiti. And I can barely read any of it, <laughs> but if I stare long enough, I can kind of make out what some of the tags were supposed to be saying. And I never actually did any tagging, but I did practice a lot of graffiti in this book. And that would eventually evolve into practicing calligraphy as I got older. And sometimes I still get the urge to go and tag a random wall just out of nowhere. And so as I entered high school, I started to get introduced to more academic approach to drawing. And my art teacher, the coordinator, would give us uh, assignments like draw a few pages of eyes here, draw some studies of the nose there, or maybe try doing the mouth and don't forget about the ear, what about the hair? And I would draw in my sketchbook and then scan stuff into Photoshop where I would add some color and shading. And at this time I was also fascinated with uh, Da Vinci's notebooks. I guess you call them, are they called codices? And you know, you know the ones with all the anatomical notes and such? So I try to kind of mimic that look whenever I got the chance. Okay, also someone in the comments once asked me if I ever drew Berserk. Well, here's the thing. I did do a copy of a drawing of Guts back in high school, but back then I had no idea who he was or what it was from. And I don't think uh, I even knew what manga was at the time. So yeah, it's kind of funny seeing him in the sketchbook. Uh, back then, like I didn't know there was something about Berserk that appealed to me, so yeah, I was oblivious to it for like a long time. Something really cool that the coordinator had us do um, was she, she had us do a self-portrait but with a twist. We had to envision what we would look like at the age of 50 or around there, and so I drew this and it looks nothing like me, but I like how it turned out anyway, and I like that I'm able to look back at the drawing and 
yeah, like I don't think I would have ever thought to do something like this unless I had been told to do it, you know? So props to the coordinator for this one. You done did good. I also had a few blank pages left in the book, so many years later, I went back and added some new drawings that showed a bit of my improvement, but still trying to study stuff the same way, you know, like I did in the beginning, like eyes and ears, just to make sure that I was revisiting the fundamentals every once in a while. It's, it's really fun to see the evolution of your drawing ability this way. So I kept another sketchbook that was more sci-fi and fantasy stuff during high school, but I'm gonna make a part two video on that because it's jam-packed full of like way too much stuff for this video. And I also printed out a few of my first digital concept art pieces I ever made and put them in there. So, cause I was, I was drawing a lot at that time. So I feel like I improved a lot in that sketchbook or in this one. And I hope to see you all then. Um, I also hope you enjoyed this visit down memory lane and I hope you go back and revisit your own work and relive your own art journey at some point and uh, yeah take care and I love you all bye bye <laughs>